Today we're going to learn how to delete files from our website. And there's going to be all types of files such as images or text files, you know, any kind of file you might have inside your root folder. We're going to learn how to delete these in this episode. Now before we do that and before we do any coding, I want to mention one thing. Now what I have in front of me here is going to be based off the previous two episodes we did on how to upload files and how to upload profile images. Now even though you guys may not have followed the previous two episodes, this lesson will still teach you how to delete files from a website. So if you have your own website in front of you right now and you just want to look for a quick way to delete files, we're going to do that in this episode. Okay? So you don't need to have my specific code in front of you. Now if you guys want to have this code and you want to follow this lesson, I'm going to go ahead and leave a link in the description of this video so you guys can download the files and follow along on this lesson here. So now that we know this, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys what we created in the previous episode just so we know what exactly we're going to do today. So inside this browser here, I have a user up in the top here with a username and a, you know, a name and a profile image. Now right now I'm actually logged in as the user. I can also log out if I want to. If I log in as this user here, I can go in and choose a file and upload a new profile image. Let's say I want to be this guy down here, upload. And as you guys can see, it now changed the profile image. Now what if I want to delete the profile image and just have a default image up here? Now, as you guys can see, I did actually went ahead and created another form down here that deletes the profile image. So if I click the delete button here, you guys can see now reverts back to the default image we have when we do not have a profile image. And I did that by changing the image and I went ahead and deleted the profile image that I uploaded before, you know, the, the picture with the guy in here. Because we don't want to, you know, just change the profile image back to the default one. We want to actually delete the file from our root folder in order to actually change it. So just to show you guys, if I go inside my uploads folder where we have all the profile images, if I go ahead and, you know, choose another image, this guy, for example, upload him. If I go into my root folder inside my uploads folder, you guys can see we have a profile image. If I go ahead and click delete, go back inside of it. Now you guys can see the profile image is gone. So we're going to learn how to delete files from our root folder. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and go inside my index.php file. And inside the index.php file, I'm going to go down to where we have our upload form because underneath the upload form, we're going to create a delete form. So I'm going to go ahead and copy my echo down here that says, you know, form action is the upload.php file. I'm going to go ahead and paste it right underneath it. Now what we're going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and delete the input we have inside of it because we don't need an input. We just need to you know, just load a file in order to delete this profile image. So inside the action here, I'm going to change the name to delete profile or something else. I'm going to go ahead and delete the ink type as well, because we don't need that in here. And I'm going to go ahead and change the text inside my button down here to delete profile image like so. Inside the text editor, we're going to go ahead and create a new file. And this file is going to be the one that deletes the profile image from our root folder. So if you guys want to learn how to delete files, this is where we're going to do it. So inside this file, I'm going to go ahead and save it as delete profile.php. And inside this file, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and open up the PHP tags. Now inside the PHP tags, we're going to go ahead and start a session because in my example here, we have a user who's logged in and in order to see the delete profile image button, we need to be locked in. So we need to have a session that actually runs so we can see who is locked in at the moment. So we're going to say session start parentheses. Underneath here, we're going to go ahead and include our database file because as you guys may know from the previous episode, we register inside the database if the user had a profile image uploaded or not. So we need to change this to false since we want to delete the profile image. So we need to set the database as the user has not a profile image uploaded. So we're going to say include underscore once, single quotes, dbh dot php. On the next line here, we're going to go ahead and get the session ID from the user who's currently locked in, which at the moment is the admin inside my website. So we're going to go ahead and say dollar sign session ID is equal to the current super global called session that has a name as ID. So right now we have the session ID 
from the user who is currently logged in, so we know which profile image we want to delete. Now the next thing we need to do is we want to delete the profile image, or at least the file that we want to delete. But before we can do that, we need to pinpoint the right file so we can actually select it and then delete it. Now because we're in the previous episode, now and this doesn't count for you guys who did not follow the previous episodes, but if you did, as you guys may remember, we did actually allow for more than one type of file to get uploaded, such as JPEGs, JPEGs, PNGs, and PDFs. Now what that means is that when we want to pinpoint the file, we need to actually go in, select the file, the extension here, which is right now JPEG, could be PNG or PDF, it could be any kind of file. So what we need to do is we need to say we have a file somewhere inside the uploads folder that has this base name, but we don't know the extension yet. So in order to find a file that we don't know the extension of, we're going to have to write a bit of code. And this is code that is really useful, even though we might not have created a system where we could upload more than just a JPEG you know, like PNGs or something. So we need to do that first. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go and create a variable called file name. I'm going to set it equal to the path that we know the image is inside of. So right now, if I go inside my root folder, you guys can see I have a folder called uploads where I have the profile images. So we need to say, okay, we want to create a path by writing a string, which is inside the uploads folder forward slash and then we have a name called profile. And then as you guys can see, if I go back inside the root folder, you guys can see I have a one in front of this profile image here. And that's because the user here has an ID as one inside the database. So we need to get the session ID of this user here, which we already created up here. So just copy it, paste it right next to it on the right side. And then what we need to do in order to actually get the extension, because right now, if I were to go in and find this specific file here, it's going to give me an error message. Because right now it doesn't know, you know, what is the file called profile one. There's no such thing in there because right now it's called profile one dot JPEG. So what we can do here is we can actually go ahead and say, well, we do also have another string. And then inside the string, we're going to write star, a multiplication symbol, which right now means that we have something going on behind this number here, you know, the session ID. So right now the, the file we're looking for is called profile one something, which is what the star does. So now that we have this, we can actually go ahead and search for the file. So what I'm going to go ahead and do here is I'm going to go ahead and create another variable. I'm going to call this one file info, set it equal to glop, which is a function we have inside PHP that goes in and searches for a specific file that has part of the name that we're looking for. So if we have a file that's called profile one something, which we have up here, it's gonna go ahead and list out all the files that matches this search up here, which in our case, because we created it in this certain way with the use ID, there's only gonna be one file that has this, okay? Now, of course, right now, if I were to have 11 users inside my database, we would actually have a, a user profile image in here that says profile 11. Now, if we search for profile 11 in this case, it's going to go ahead and list out two users. And the reason for that is that profile one, which we're searching for up here, is going to be inside both profile images names. Now, we will get around that. I'm going to show you guys in just a second how we're not going to get an error message when we do actually, you know, get the image using glob. So for now, let's actually just go ahead and continue here. And I'm going to show you guys what I mean in a few seconds. So inside the glob function here, we want to get the file name because we're looking for this specific file up here. So file info right now, if I were to go down and print R, this one here, parentheses, file info, go inside my website, refresh, and then delete my profile image, you guys will see we get an array. Right now, the first data inside our array is equal to this path right here because it found a file called profile1.jpg, which is our profile image that we have. So right now we did actually get the extension without having to type the .jpg inside the path. Now we get one problem, which is the one I mentioned before. Let's say I have one user inside the database which has a ID as 11, which I do actually have in here. I did actually create one that has an ID as 11. And he also uploaded a profile image. Now what it's gonna look like if I go inside my uploads folder and just kind of copy the image I have in here 
and change the name to profile 11, which in this case is what it would actually be like, you know, had I uploaded a profile image as user 11. If I go back inside my browser, refresh the website and go back again, you guys can see we get two results. We get one piece of data inside this array called this file, which is .jpg. And then I get another piece of data, which is also a search result that matches what I typed in, which is equal to uploads profile 11. Because we just said we needed anything behind the one. So right now there's something that matches that says one.jpg. Now the thing I want to point out here is even though we have two results from the search, uh, the first one is always going to be the one that you guys are searching for. If I were to search for uploads profile 11, we would only get one result. That would be this one over here. So this one would actually have the data place a zero, where in this case we search for profile one, which means it's gonna get out both these results, but the one we're looking for is always going to be the first one. Okay, so it's really important that you guys focus on that we only need the first data result. So what we can do now is we can actually go back, delete the print R function down here because we don't actually need it. And we're gonna go ahead and create another variable where we need to get the extension of this file here. So we're gonna say file ext is equal to explode because now we need to actually take this we have up here from the file info, parentheses, semicolon. And then what we need to do is we need to insert two parameters. We need to tell it where we want to explode the string and we need to tell it which string we want to explode. So right now we're gonna write double quotes, punctuation, because we want to take it apart right before we get the extension. And then the second parameter is going to be the file info variable we have up here, which in this case is going to have all the search results from this string up here. So what's really important to know here is that based off what I told you guys a few seconds ago, uh, we might get more than one result when we run this glob search here. So we need to make sure we only get the first result by writing brackets, and then inside the brackets, we write zero, because now we only get the first result from our array that we get from the glob search up here. So after we do this, let's actually go ahead and print R what we just did here. So we say print underscore R, parentheses, semicolon, and then we're gonna print R the file extension variable we have up here, just to show you guys what we're doing. If I refresh the website, delete profile image, you guys can see we get an array, you know, based off the explode function we did, where we get two different results. We get the first data, which is equal to uploads profile one, and we get the second data right here, which is equal to JPEG. So now we just got the extension from the file. Having the extension now, we can go ahead and go down to the next line and say file actual extension, which is equal to the file extension we have up here, array that has the data as the second data, which in this case would be one. So right now, file actual extension is equal to JPEG. Okay, so now we have the extension, we can actually go ahead and go in and delete the file. So what we need to do now is we need to write the full path to where we want to delete the file and the file name that we want to delete. Because right now, we just figured out what the file extension is, so we can actually write the complete file name of the file we want to delete. So down here, we're gonna say we have a variable called file, which is equal to a path called uploads, forward slash profile, and then we want to get the session ID afterwards. So it's actually basically the same as what we have up here. We can actually just go ahead and copy what we have up here because that would be silly not to. And instead of saying we have something going on after the session ID, we can actually include the extension we just got from up here. So we're gonna say we have profile one dot the file actual extension. So now it's dot JPEG. So now we just got the right file name or the, the right file extension, and now we wrote the entire name of this file. So now that we have the entire file name, we can actually go ahead and start deleting the file. So we're gonna write an if statement because we want to have an error message if we did actually manage not to delete this certain file. So we want to know if we had some kind of errors. So we're gonna say inside the if statement, we have a exclamation mark on link parentheses. Now the unlink function here is going to be the one that goes in and deletes the file. So if we did not manage to, you know, delete this specific file here called $file, which we need to insert inside the parentheses, then it needs to give us an error message. But else, 
Then it needs to delete the file and maybe take us back to the front page or something. So what we need to do here is we can actually go ahead and write the error message. We can say echo file was not deleted or something. Then inside the else statement, we can go ahead and make another echo if we wanted to. We can say file was deleted. By the way, we're not going to see these messages here because we're just going to get taken directly back to the front page. But if you want to test this out and not write a header function that takes us back, it's going to say one of these two things. So we're just doing this because we want to run this function up here called onLink, which is being run right now, even though it's inside an if statement. So now that we deleted the file, we can actually go ahead and go down to the next line. And what we need to do now, at least in our case, based off the previous two episodes, is we need to go inside the database and update our image profile table or profile image table, which right now has a profile image set to true because my user uploaded a profile image before that we want to delete. And because of that, it's right now set to true. So we need to change it back to false because it just deleted it. So what we need to do here is we need to write a dollar sign SQL, which is an SQL command we want to run inside the database, double quotes, and then we want to run an update profile image, which is the database table name, set status, which is the column that is equal to true or false. In our case, right now it's equal to true because it says we have a profile image uploaded. We want to change that to false. So we're going to say equal to one where user ID is equal to our current session ID that we just have up here. So right now we're changing this at the user that has a user ID as the current session we're logged in as. Semicolon. And then again, semicolon. Now I did actually get asked uh, before about this semicolon that I sometimes include and sometimes leave out of my SQL string. Now, just to make it clear, this right here is correct. And this right here is also correct. Now, some databases prefer that you close off your SQL string that we have inside here with a semicolon. So I recommend that you always do it. Okay. So after we just included the SQL string we wanted to run inside the database, we're going to go ahead and actually run it. So I'm going to go ahead and write my SQLI underscore query, which means that we're now querying this SQL string up here. I'm going to paste in dollars on SQL. And we're also going to include our database connection, which we included up here inside this file. In here we have a variable called con, which is our connection to the database. Like so. So now what we just did is we updated our database. After we updated the database, we want to be taken back to the front page. So I'm going to write a header function that says double quotes, location, colon, index dot PHP. And then after the PHP, we're just going to go ahead and include a just a small message. So it says delete, complete or success. Like so. Now we have this, we just successfully deleted our profile image. So what we can do now is we can actually go ahead and test this. There's one more thing we need to do, at least if you created the, you know, the profile image upload system with me in the previous two episodes, there's one more thing we need to do, uh, which is that we need to change the extension that we actually show inside the browser, because right now I'm actually showing a JPEG image, but what if we uploaded a PNG image when we uploaded a profile image, you know, we need to change that. But if you did not follow the previous two episodes, this is not something you need to worry about. So let's actually go ahead and test what we just did. If I go back inside my website and refresh, you guys can see once I click delete profile image, we get the default image because we changed the, you know, our user inside the profile image table to false. So right now we do not have a profile image uploaded. If I go back inside my website, choose a profile image, upload, go back to the database. You guys can see that the status right now of the first row we have in here is going to change to zero. And again, if I change it again, delete the profile image, you guys can see it says false. So we just uh, successfully uh, deleted a profile image and we changed a database uh, column. Now, if you guys followed the previous episode we did on how to upload profile images, there's one more thing we need to change in order to show these images properly inside the browser. And just one more thing I want to point out, I did actually make a typo in the previous episode 
regarding the double quotes and single quotes down here where we have the empty random function. So if you guys didn't see that in the annotation in the previous episode because it disabled them, I recommend you guys go back, enable annotations and check for the, you know, the typo I made here, or at least check it right now because this should be correct. So what we need to do here is, as you guys can see, we did actually go in and say that the profile image that we uploaded was a JPEG image because we just used a JPEG as an example in the previous episode, but it didn't occur to me that we might upload a PNG image instead. So right now, if I go inside the browser we have and I upload a PNG image instead, let's actually go ahead and delete our profile image and then upload a PNG image instead which could be this one here, doesn't really matter, just any kind of PNG, you guys can see that we have no images displayed. It does actually give us an error message because right now inside the front page, it says we need to display a JPEG image. So what we need to do here is we do actually need to do kind of the same thing as we did in our delete profile image file here, where we went in and searched for that specific profile image and then we need to see if the extension was a JPEG or PNG or PDF or whatever. So we need to copy all we have here in line six, seven, eight, and nine, copy it, go inside the index page. And right before we start showing the image, we need to insert these lines of code. So we do actually get the proper extension. Then we just simply copy it down here. Then we go inside the string where it says dot JPEG. We delete the JPEG, write double quotes twice because we also need the question mark behind it two punctuations, and then we insert the file actual extension. So now we get the proper extension. And once we go back to the browser, you guys can see we now get the proper profile image. Now, of course, we're also going to get a session ID error message, which is because right now we do, we do not have the, what do you call it? The session ID variable down here. But as you guys can see, we do actually have the ID up here from the previous code we did in the previous episode. So I can actually replace it with this code down here. So we do actually get the proper user ID. Save it. And now we should have no error messages. So now we can also go ahead and delete the PNG image if you want to, because we did actually create it correctly. As you guys can see, if I go inside my root folder, there's no PNG image as well. So now we can upload all kinds of files and delete them again. So this is how we can delete stuff from our website. And I hope you guys found this useful and I'll see you guys next time.